where do I start? Um, I don't think there's any good way to start this video, so we're just going to start talking. <laughs> um, a lot of you follow me on my social media accounts like Instagram and Facebook, and so you're already aware. But for anyone that doesn't, my mom passed away Friday, November 20th at 10.30 p.m. And so this is the first day I felt like I've been able to sit down and maybe talk about it without melting into a blubbering mess about it. <laughs> Although I still might, no promises. So um, I'm just gonna talk to you guys about that day a little bit, um, tell you the story of my mom's passing because you guys have been with me on this journey since the very beginning when mom was diagnosed. Gosh darn it. <laughs> Oh, I told myself I wasn't going to cry. My children are going to try to get into my bedroom this entire video, but I locked them out. <laughs> so, um, Friday. I usually met my mom's from 9 in the morning till about 2 o'clock after I get Amelia from school. And then we have an aide come in and then there's someone there in the evening to help with the night shift. So I dropped Amelia off at school that day and I went to my mom's at nine o'clock. My sister was meeting me over there. I think she came over about 10 o'clock maybe. But um, the evening person who had been there overnight said that my mom had had a very restless night, which was pretty normal for her up to this point. She hadn't been sleeping well at night, but sleeping a lot during the day. And um, because mom was bedridden for days now, her sheets had gotten pulled um, up off the end of her bed and needed to be fixed. And we needed to change her like wet pad underneath her. So in order to do that, because m none of my mom's arms or legs work, she can't move on her own, we needed to hoyer her. So me and the night person and one of my mom's old next door neighbors who just happened to stop by that day and thought that you know she should come visit um between the three of us we hoyered my mom up and the ladies helped do the shoots real quick we switched out the pad underneath mom and brought her back down just doing that simple task you know no energy needed of my mom because she's hoyering completely wipes her out usually and that's why hoyering is such a, a big deal at the end um, but we did it and and the two ladies left and I could tell that my mom was tired really tired and just feeling really weak and um, the past few days leading up to this day she had wanted me to sit right next to her and hold her hand a lot of the times instead of sitting in the chair kind of behind her bed where you guys see me sometimes. So I did that. Um, I gave her her morning meds which included morphine and Ativan for the anxiety and even Haldol um, which is uh, anti-nausea, anti-hallucinations <laughs> medication. So she was pretty loaded up on meds and um, she fell asleep she didn't sleep well that night I figured that she needed a nap and this like I said had been pretty normal for her so my sister came over and we were whispering and we usually talked and typically my mom's kind of a light sleeper so she might sleep but then she'll wake up and kind of give my sister and I a look like shh be quiet <laughs> but she didn't do that this time um, she was definitely out so three or four hours pass of her sleeping, napping, and she wakes up and um, doesn't feel good, really is having a hard time breathing. And she keeps doing the sign for I'm sorry and I love you and that she wants to die and that she's finished because my mom can't talk or anything using her sign language is has been one of her ways to communicate 
And at this point, I noticed that she was having trouble um, even holding her phone up and, and communicating through her app. Um, her eyes were barely open, even though she was not asleep anymore. She wasn't really all there. You know, her eyes were just half open. Um, and at some point, with her being more awake, she started hallucinating. So she was like in and out of this dream state um, where she would she would communicate with me through sign language that she was sorry, she, she would roll her head kind of back and forth. Um, I took her phone away from her because she couldn't even lift it up, but she still, um, maybe I'll show you guys a little clip because I did take a, a video of it to send to, um, I think it was my sister because my sister had stepped outside saying, you know, mom's hallucinating. She took like this in her hand like it was a phone, like she was holding a phone and started texting and her eyes weren't even open she was just doing it she started trying to take off her clothes she touched her face a lot she kept telling someone to come here um like i said her eyes weren't even open she was like in this dream state like acting these things out hallucinating at that point i was really concerned and i called hospice Hospice told me that I could increase the morphine every one to two hours and that they it sounds like from what I told them that she was in active death Which again, we were expecting she was going to pass away soon. So it wasn't you know We expected it after the hallucinations she hallucinated for about an hour and then I ended up giving her one more dose of morphine to keep her comfortable because I could tell that she was struggling for air and some more Haldol. And at that point she fell into a deep sleep, even deeper than before, if that's possible. But I just remember she was laying in bed and her hand was kind of resting on her chest and her facial muscles were so weak she couldn't keep her mouth shut at all. So her mouth was open um, and she you know, every breath was, it wasn't the, the sh Cheyenne stroke strokes, <laughs> the, you know, the breathing that you get like right before death, but it was more like, um, like apnea breath kind of like, <gasps> <gasps> but they were even like they were regular. So my sister and I were talking in a normal voice. We would have a conversation and I was sitting right next to my mom holding her hand and she didn't flinch a bit. Like she was so far into sleep. Um, I think that at that point really like she never came back to conscience after that. She was like her mind was gone, which I am thankful for. I'm, ha I'm hoping that she was just in like this dream world or just like a different level of consciousness and her mind was somewhere else because the rest of it is <laughs> her body actively going. My cousin, my two cousins were coming over to see my mom that had been helping with her care a lot. One of my cousins is an RN so she helped with a lot of stuff with my mom and I had been in communication with her all day that I felt like mom was going to pass. So when she got out of work at the hospital, she came over with her sister. And at that point, my sister had been there all day and we thought that it might be an all-nighter. We weren't sure when mom was gonna pass. So um, Sarah decided you know, she was gonna go home quick and take a shower and get a, her pajamas on and then come back. So I thought that was okay because my cousins were with me if anything happened. So my cousins were there and they played some videos of my other cousins right next to her, my mom's ear. Again, my mom didn't even flinch at the sound of hearing the video. Um, we were all talking, the TV was on, and mom was just out. <laughs> so my cousin who's an RN said, you know, make sure that your mom's comfortable, which I made sure, and so Sarah made it back. Um, Sarah came in and my two cousins were about to leave and mom's head moved and it was kind of like a, uh, you know, like a little groan. And I thought, oh no, she's gonna come back too and she's gonna be really anxious because she can't breathe. And so I gave her more of her meds because she was due. I gave her more morphine, more Ativan, all three of them, <laughs> all held all. 
and I just wanted my mom at that point to stay in her dream world wherever she was. Um, I just didn't want her to come back to reality and think, oh, I haven't died yet because that's how it's been all week. She will wake up from sleep and think, oh, I didn't die yet. She has wanted to die for so long because of this disease. It's been torture for her and I just didn't want to see her in her last moments being anxious or suffering or anything. So I gave her more meds. My cousins left at that point and like I said, my sister made it back and um, my my mom stirred like a little bit and then she fell back into a sleep and then a minute after she fell back into a sleep, I could hear the um, death breathing. <laughs> Shine Stokes. <laughs> Cheyenne Stokes. I don't know. I always want to call it Cheyenne Strokes. No. Her eyes were shut, but like also a little tiny bit open. <laughs> and her breathing was more like. <sighs> like really, really paused in between breaths. And my sister and I, you know, I'm, I'm right by my mom's bedside. My sister is behind me. I'm holding her hand and we're just, we cannot take our eyes off what's happening. And at this point, the rest of the story is probably the most dramatic, traumatic thing I have ever experienced in my life and will ever experience is watching my mom die. I've talked about this story with some friends and stuff, so I thought I would be okay <laughs> at this part, but... So all day, because my mom was so skinny and sunken in at this point, there was a vein in her neck and I had watched it pulsate all day. And um, I was, while I was holding my mom's hand and her breathing started getting different, she just didn't look well. You know, she her face was very blue and purple. Her lips were purple. Um, she had like the molted skin starting to happen. And... Um, I watched the vein in her neck like I couldn't take my eyes off it, just waiting. And within five minutes, it started getting weaker and weaker. And finally, like, it was gone. And then I just watched her kind of take her last breath. And it was weird because I feel like some of her neurons or her reflexes, like, her body did, like, twitch a little bit here and there. But I think at that point she was gone. She took a breath and then my sister and I looked at each other and my sister said she would call hospice and then like she kind of took another breath but it wasn't like an actual breath. It was just like her body like like twitching almost like she was going to take a breath but there was nothing there. And then the image of my mom's um, lips turning from that purple color to white and the rest of her skin turning white and then you know she was just gone those are the images that are very hard for me to get out of my head and with people that have been through stuff like this i've talked to some close friends and they've said that those images will probably never go away but new ones will replace them and um, eventually i'll be able to tell this story maybe without crying <laughs> But hospice came, you know, we called hospice and they came and cleaned mom up and they were wonderful. And, um, and the funeral guys came and, um, at this point it was like one o'clock in the morning. She passed at 1030, but it was, my sister and I unfortunately had to be with my mom for like an hour with her gone, um, sitting right next to her until hospice came and, and everything. And when the guys came to get her body, I helped them move her over to the gurney. You know, I, I kept her head under the pillow and, and then they kind of zipped her up in the body bag and took her out of her home. From the moment we found out that my mom had ALS and we knew that she was probably gonna die because there just isn't a lot of options with ALS yet, which is so unfortunate. Um, we have started mourning from that point, my mom's passing. And it's like we almost mourned with my mom there too. So even though it was still hard 
her passing with my dad it was like he had a heart attack and boom gone and boom he was gone the next day and we didn't get to say our goodbyes and and it was just such a blow you know a blow to the system with my mom it was more of like we eased into it and even though it's my mom so it's obviously really really hard and i was like literally there for her 24 7 um the past few months so it's really hard to unwind all that right now um i got to say my goodbyes and i love yous and and you know she really like helped my sister and i like grieve a little bit through the process the next day i woke up and was a mess <laughs> i literally cried all day i think i maybe put something on my instagram stories that day or maybe it was the next day but um you know even even if i wasn't actively thinking of my mom the tears just ran down my face literally all day my eyes hurt <laughs> and like right here on my eyes hurt from wiping my tears away my husband was amazing. Amir was there for me. He helped with the kids so much. Um, I had to break the news to my daughter, who's six, Amelia. And she had so many questions. She had me walk her through the story of how Mima died like three times and still is asking so many questions. We have um, stuff that the church dropped off for us, like children's stuff and hospice. So um, we're going to start going through some of that stuff and help with a lot of her questions because I don't know how to answer some of them for her or to comfort her more than I already am. Yesterday was the funeral. We laid mom to rest and due to COVID and eat and due to COVID um, and my mom's own wishes, we kept it very private and small and it was good. Um, I did okay yesterday. I know that from my dad's passing that really the only thing that helps this kind of pain is is time i can eventually think about mom and these stories and not burst into tears or feel like my heart's gonna die too so mom's journey with als is over but her legacy with als lives on my mom was such an advocate she tweeted two days before she passed um you know she put things out on facebook she was such an advocate for it for um neuron and getting meds released and everything she was truly a warrior and made a huge difference with the als community and she was going to fight this disease till her last breath and that's exactly what she did and even though there is still no cure for als i have faith that in years to come hopefully there will be one for anyone who gets diagnosed with this awful disease and hopefully my mom made a little bit of a difference with getting um, a drug approved so that somebody else can live their life and not pass away like my mom did. With that being said, I'm going to link my mom's favorite ALS um, organization down below which is IamALS.org and for anyone that wants to visit the site to learn more about ALS or to donate that'll be linked down below lastly before I end this video I want to thank all of you my friends my family my YouTube subscribers for coming with me along on this journey and for coming with my mom along on this journey um, the videos I have of my mom and I me taking care of her bringing her to appointments all that stuff is memories that I'm gonna get to look back on and I'm so thankful that I was able to film them on YouTube and you know I have to try to move on with my life now even though that's hard but a little bit at a time I'll get there thank you all for the love and support that you have shown my family and all the prayers everything we love you guys so much, and I truly have the best support system that I could have right now. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. You can follow me on Instagram because my comments are always turned off, so you can reach out to me that way. And don't forget to like this video. I love you guys. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving, and I will be vlogging in my next video. So I'll catch you tomorrow. Bye. 
Stumbling out of bed And I still got you in my head From all those pretty words you said It's like I'm wasted Every time I see your face I'm losing track of time and space I don't know where I am It's like I'm wasted And I won't waste it And I promise that I 